Greetings, friends. David Marks here. In this lesson, we are going to capitalize on Lightroom Classic's new subject masking capability. If masking or the fundamentals of how developed presets work are new for you, then you should probably watch some of my other in-depth videos on those topics before proceeding with this one. Also, I need to warn you that this is one of those lessons where it takes a while to get things set up before the real magic happens. If you're ready to learn something amazing, then let's jump right in and let's get started. If you have a strong background in photography, then you probably know that the human eye is inherently attracted to the brightest, warmest, and most detailed parts of any photograph. To make my model really stand out, I'm going to tap here to open up Lightroom Classic's masking panel. Now, I'm going to activate Classic's new Select Subject Masking Tool. If you're wondering, I have the Show Overlay option turned on right now, which is why that red rubolith appeared to indicate the area that this mask is going to affect. With this selection in place, I'm going to bring the brightness and the contrast up a little bit. I think I'll also raise the shadows a little bit here too. Now, I'm going to tap on the three little dots icon beside this mask layer to rename this one. When this menu appears, I'll choose the Rename option, and I'll call this one Boost Subject Exposure. Let's take things further by repeating this process. To do that, I'll tap on the Create New Mask button, and I'll use the Select Subject command again. This time, I'm going to shift the white balance toward warmer colors, but on this layer, I'm going to leave all of the exposure controls alone. While I'm in here, I'm also going to add a tiny increase into the saturation. Now, I'm going to rename this mask, and I'll call this one Boost Subject Color. Let's repeat this process one more time. Once again, I'll create a new mask using Select Subject, but this time, I'm only going to adjust the texture, clarity, and sharpness controls. Let's rename this mask. And like the others, I'll name this one Boost Subject Detail. Now, let's save all of this work as a new developed preset. To create a new developed preset, I need to open up the left hand panel. I need to open up the Presets tab. And now I'll tap on this little plus symbol here to create a new preset. When this big box appears, don't panic. I know this dialog looks intimidating but we only need to push a couple of buttons in here to save our work. Starting at the bottom, let's tap on the Check None button. Next, let's tap over here where it says Masking and make sure that all three of the Boost subject masks have check marks beside them. If all three of these have check marks, then they will be included in this Develop preset. Next, make sure that the new Support Amount slider down here is also enabled. Now, let's give this develop preset a name. To do that, I'll tap up here and I'll type something like portrait subject boost. If your screen looks like mine, then go ahead and tap on the create button, please. Okay, so now let me show you what we've accomplished. I think the best way to show you this magic is to tap on any of the three little dot icons beside one of our masks and then to choose the Delete All Mask command. Trust me, if you saved a preset like mine, then you can delete all of these masks without any fear. With all of the masks gone, we are back to where we began today. But now, when I want to add these masks onto this image or onto any other photo, then all I have to do is to come over here and tap on the name of my new preset. Voila, just like that, all of these masks are back. Let me turn the entire masking panel off and on a few times so you can see the complete effect. That's pretty nice, and there's an extra bonus in here too. The reason why I created a separate mask for each attribute is so that we can go to any of these layers at this point, and then we can use the amount slider that lives at the top of the masking panel to make our changes stronger or softer without having to adjust each and every slider. That looks good, and it doesn't take a big change with any of these mask layers to make my model stand out more from the background. 
Are you ready to see some really mind-blowing alchemy though? Let's move over to a completely different image. The first thing that I'm going to do here is to tap on this develop preset again. Bam. In no time, Lightroom creates completely new masks for me for this photo, and our subject pops again. The areas that the select subject command chose for this image are completely different from the areas that we picked on the last image. The magic of building developed presets that capitalize on Lightroom's AI masking capabilities is that Lightroom will recalculate the areas that your mask need to change each and every time that you use them. And there's another bonus too. If I felt like I wanted to soften the change that all of these masks have made here, then I could adjust them all one by one by moving the amount slider or any of the other sliders. But there's also a control over here at the top of the presets panel. By moving this amount slider, I can raise or lower the combined effect of each of these masks all at once. This is truly amazing stuff. But before we move on, I do need to warn you that AI adaptive presets like these are not going to work perfectly for you every time. These developed presets are only going to work well on images where Lightroom's detect subject masking algorithm produces high quality results. But when it works, and it usually works, this type of developed preset is a huge time saver for the busy portrait photographer. If you've made it this far into this video, then I have a little more to teach you. When it comes to guiding our viewers' eyes around our canvas, boosting up the subject helps, but so does the opposite. This time, our goal is to create a separate developed preset that will slightly reduce the brightness, warmth, and sharpness of the background. To do that, we need to repeat the process that we went through in the first part of this tutorial, starting with the select subject command. But the critical step this time is to tap here on the invert button so that this mask targets the background and not my models. For our first mask group, let's lower the brightness and the contrast of the background only. To do that, I'll set the exposure down just a little bit and I'll lower the contrast. I think I'll also make a small reduction to the highlights as well. Now, let's give this one a name. I'll call this one Reduce Background Exposure. Next, we need to repeat this process two more times. Again, starting with the Create New Mask button, I'll use the Select Subject command again, and then I'll immediately hit the Invert option. This time, I'm going to leave all the exposure adjustments alone, and I'll lower the white balance. Think, also lower the saturation a tiny bit. It might not be real noticeable here, but that should be enough to cool the background down. So let's give this one a name. I'll call this one Reduce Background Color. Finally, we're gonna need one more mask to soften the detail slightly in our background. On this one, I'm gonna lower the texture, the clarity, and the sharpening. We'll give this one a name too, just like the others. Call this one Reduce Background Detail. Now, let's save all this work as a new develop preset. Just like last time, all that we need for this develop preset to work are check marks beside our masks, and we want to be sure that the Support Amount Slider option is active too. Let's give this one a name. I'll call this one Portrait Reduce Background. At this point, I can hit Create. To show you what we've accomplished, let me delete all of the masks on this image again. So now we're back to where we were a few minutes ago. When I'm ready to add additional separation into a portrait like this one, all I have to do is to tap on my Develop preset, the one that says Portrait Reduce Background first, and bam, in one click, the background behind these young ladies is now a little darker, cooler, and less detailed. If I wanted to push the effect further, I could of course refine the controls for each mask, but in this case, I think I'll just drag the preset amount slider up to about 150. Next, I'm gonna tap on my portrait subject boost preset, and now my nieces really glow. 
If their skin tones seem too warm at this point, then all I have to do is to find the right layer over here, and then I can lower the amount slider for that mask only. If I hit the Done button, and I hide the panels away, and split my screen, I see a subtle but noticeable difference here. The image on the left, our original starting point with no masks, is okay. But in the one on the right, these ladies really glow, and my attention is drawn right into their smiling faces. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you learned something today, then please hit the subscribe button and leave us a like or a comment down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in our next tutorial.